Obviously, one of the changes in the Earth system that people are concerned about now is climate change. We hear it in the news all the time. Uh, we see images of storms and of fires and of heat waves and other things that are happening. And of course, it's a very big problem. We realize it's a big problem. But it's not the only thing that's happening to the global scale environment. There are many other changes that are happening. Uh, some of them are, are with the big global cycles that climate change interacts with, like the carbon cycle, like the nitrogen cycle. A lot of people are concerned about carbon dioxide and the carbon cycle and carbon sinks. And indeed, these are very important. But humans have changed the nitrogen cycle much more than they've changed the carbon cycle. Uh, for example, humans now directly fix, and that's a technical term to say, we take nitrogen gas from the atmosphere, which is unreactive, and we use industrial processes to turn it into reactive nitrogen. And we need this to make fertilizers to grow more food to feed more people. But in fact, we now fix more nitrogen than all of the natural terrestrial processes combined on Earth. That's a much bigger change to that cycle than we're changing the carbon cycle. And you might say, well, what, what does that mean? Now, was that a, a problem? Well, we start to see it in many different ways. We see it in a powerful greenhouse gas called nitrous oxide, which again relates to the climate problem. But we see it in eutrophication of lakes. Uh, we see it in uh, acidification of soils. We see it in excess nitrogen, which is transferred uh, by rivers into the coastal zones with implications for coral reefs and other marine ecosystems. Uh, so again, th this happens at a very small scale, but it adds up to become a global problem. Another example of, of a global environmental change, uh, which is occurring uh, independent of climate change, is loss of biodiversity. The two are now interacting, climate change and biodiversity, but there's already a huge extinction event occurring with or without climate change. And that's, again, driven directly by human activities, primarily modification of habitats through land clearing and through direct modifications to coastal zones. We now estimate that uh, if you compare to the background rates of biodiversity loss that we can see from the fossil records, we're now perhaps 100 or even 1,000 times uh, more extinctions than we saw in the past. Uh, and that's leading toward what many ecologists say is the sixth great extinction event in the Earth's history, but the first one to be caused by another biological species, ourselves. Uh, so that occurs independent of climate change. Now when you put climate change on top of that, we estimate another tenfold increase in extinctions this century, up to uh, perhaps 1,000 or 10,000 times the background level. And indeed, that would be a catastrophe, uh, leading to, for example, 10, 20, 30 percent of all mammal and bird species going extinct by 2100. So uh, this is, a, a, again, a change that has uh, resulted from human activities, uh, but is uh, not directly related to climate change. Uh, another example is land use change. Another example is overfishing. Uh, most of the world's fisheries are either fully exploited or some of them are even depleted to the point where there are estimates that 90% of the top predators, the big fish, have now disappeared from the oceans. Uh, so we could uh, catalog, and we have cataloged, many, many changes uh, which occur at small scales, but they occur everywhere. So they become a global phenomenon. So when we put these together, we call this global change as opposed to climate change. Climate change is a part of that, and it interacts with many of these other ones. But it's a far more complex story than just climate change.